Let's talk about Georgia. Georgia's in the news again. And it's in the news again, again, because of elections. <coughs> Election procedures. And to remind you, Georgia didn't start being in the news about elections uh, in you know, this last election cycle, but the previous election cycle during the uh, gubernatorial elections in 2018, when Stacey Abrams, who was a Democratic nominee for governor, refused to concede to Governor Brian Kemp, despite losing by more than 50,000 votes, she refused to concede, you know, and then she complained about Trump refusing to concede, right? But she refused to, and, and he only lost by 12,000 votes, but she lost by 50,000 votes. Why? Because she claimed that Kemp, when he was Secretary of State, before he ran for governor, he was Secretary of State, had purged hundreds of thousands from the voter rolls, hundreds of thousands of her supporters from the voter rolls. So the first cycle was the Democrats complained that the Republicans won because they had rigged the election, because they had rigged the election to make them win. So Republicans know, according to all of us, the Republicans know how to rig elections. And yet, those same Republicans, you know, Brian Kemp, the, the governor of, uh, of uh, Georgia, and the new Secretary of State, and the guy responsible for the elections, I think Spalding is his name, somehow they forgot how to rig elections when it came to the presidential election, and they allowed the Democrats to rig the elections, right? That's the story we are told. And uh, Trump lost Georgia by 12,000 votes and uh, complained about it. And the Democrats went apoplectic. How dare you complain about it? When two years old, previously, they had complained about it. Now, it turns out that Stacey Abrams was wrong and that President Trump was wrong. And, and President Trump and all this entourage and the people on here that are claiming election fraud. Um, there just hasn't really been, on scale, I'm not saying there hasn't been any election fraud, there's always some election fraud, but there's no evidence, zero evidence, that there was election fraud on the scale that would reverse an election, and again, every court in the land is ruled the same, including the Supreme Court, um, and, and, and I, I don't want to uh, debate this again. There, there just wasn't any election fraud. Uh, there wasn't any evidence of, of large-scale election fraud. There's zero evidence of that actually happening. So, but it's been going back and forth, right? Democrats are complaining, Republicans are complaining, everybody's complaining because nobody likes the results. And whenever you don't like the results, what do you do? You complain. You complain. Right? And so what have the Republicans done? The Republicans, uh, you know, huge under pressure from um, their constituency to do something because 60% or something of Republicans still believe that Biden didn't win the election. So they're putting pressure on a lot of state legislatures to pass bills that will fix what they believe are the problems with the election. Now, the fact is that the people in charge of writing these laws in Georgia, uh, including the governor, don't actually believe there was a problem during the election. Right? Uh, and if they... And they've expressed so, and they're the ones actually writing these bills. But they have to, you know, put on a show to the Republican base that they are doing something. So uh, Georgia did a comprehensive kind of uh, new uh, voting laws uh, for the state. Uh, and they passed recently. It's, it's uh, uh, Senate Bill 202 that the governor, Governor Kemp, the same governor, Stacey Abrams accused of, um, of uh, cheating, and then uh, Trump accused him of not supporting Trump and therefore allowing the Democrats to cheat. So, you know, cheating all surrounding Governor Kemp. So Governor Kemp signed this new law into bill. The Democrats went apoplectic, just apoplectic. Uh, President Biden has called these new laws un-American, uh, he said that these new laws are basically, quote, Jim Crow in the 21st century. Jim Crow in the 21st century. So let's just remind ourselves what Jim Crow relates to when it comes to election laws. What did Jim Crow have? So in, in 1877, 
at a constitutional convention in Georgia, lawmakers implement a cumulative poll tax requiring would-be voters to pay a fee before casting a ballot, basically pricing out of the market for voting all freed staves who had no income. In 1907, Georgia Governor Hockey Smith signed a bill amending the state constitution to create a literacy test for voting, knowing again that a significant number of Georgian blacks were not literate, right? But what's interesting about the, liter the, 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 the literacy test was anybody who was a descendant from the Confederate or Union soldier, anybody who was an ex-soldier, was exempt. Heirs of the, you know, descendants of. So clearly racist, clearly both were targeted at excluding black voters. Um, a year later, in 1908, Georgia's Democratic Party joined other southern states in establishing a white primary that explicitly prohibited black voters from participating. I mean, these are the real, I mean, some, there are many, many more, of the Jim Crow the evil Jim Crow laws that are a, a real embarrassment for this country in terms of its history. It, it, it's really horrific to imagine that this country had these laws. And yet, the law in Georgia has been the president of the United States, the legally elected president of the United States, one should add, right, is accusing these laws now, the new laws, the laws that just passed, of being Jim Crow in the 21st century. Um, I saw that Stacey Abrams, the same Stacey Abrams, is still very active, obviously, in Georgia politics. Two weeks before the law passed, bought the domain, knowing that this would become a Democratic talking point. I'm trying to find the domain. Um, I think it was Jim Crow Laws 2.0.com, something like that. She bought the domain. Uh, two weeks before, to make this a big issue. Now, I, I am reading about this law primarily from um, sources that were extremely unfriendly to Trump because um, I didn't want like the, the, the traditional conservative or Trump people defending these laws. I wanted people who actually thought that Biden won the election. I wanted their view of what this law was about. So according to them, the bill actually expands voting access for most Georgians. It mandates that precincts hold at least 17 days of early voting, including two Saturdays, with Sundays as optional. People the, the, uh, uh, the opponents of this law on the Democratic side, the ones who call it Jim Crow, are saying, oh, they're excluding Sundays because I guess blacks tend to vote right after church on Sunday. But they can vote on Saturday. They can vote every other day of the week. 17 days of early voting. The voting booths during this early voting have to be open at least eight hours. Between 7 a.m., they have to operate between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eight hours between those two hours. Some states, some states, including deep blue states, I always have to remember the colors of which party is which color, because um, don't have in person early, early voting at all. Uh, New Jersey, Delaware, for example. Well, no, New Jersey has it before fewer than 17 days, Delaware has none. Um, so, Georgia's. 17 days. It leaves in place one of um, Trump's main complaints about voting in Georgia and elsewhere. The absentee ballot, the no excuse absentee ballot. The law leaves that in place. Uh, it tweaks it a little bit. It tightens the window to apply for an absentee ballot to just 67 days over two months. You have to complete, uh, you have to complete it online. Uh, oh, uh, you now have to complete the application online. 
uh, or you can do it online, and you received, uh, the application has to be received at least 11 days before an election to ensure that you get it in time and it gets returned on time. All reasonable. There's nothing crazy about this. It prohibits government agencies from mailing an absentee ballot to voters unsolicited. Again, not crazy. I can, you could argue either way, but not a crazy idea. Jim Crow. I don't see Jim Crow anywhere here. Um, let's see. Uh, one second. Let me just copy paste this thing. All right, done. Um, let's see what else. What else? All right. So they've abandoned signature matching. Signature matching is a mess. I mean, uh, you you wouldn't want to match my signature. I mean, it's just too hard, and it's time intensive, and it's just difficult to do. Instead, they're going to actually demand some identity. So. The absentee ballots, you're going to have to uh, use a, uh, all these ballots, you're going to have to use an, a driver's license or voter identification card, which are free in Georgia, and uh, you can uh, include a photocopy of, um, of a utility bill, a bank statement, a government check, any one of these things. So they're trying to make it as easy as possible, but they're trying to make sure that you are who you are, which seems very reasonable to me in terms of voting. Again, some states don't have ID checks. Some states do, but again, Jim Crow, you could argue either way, maybe, although I think IDs make complete sense, but Jim Crow, it's, it, this is nutty. It allows, for the first time in Georgia, election workers to begin processing absentee ballots two weeks before an election to avoid reporting delays like we saw in this last election and requires them to announce the total number of ballots cast in person, absentee, early, and provisional by 10 p.m. on election night so that you have a lot more visibility into the process. And as soon as the polls close, we can get the results of the absentee votes because those will be counted like we did in Florida. You remember we got all the absentee votes? So it looked like early on in the night, Florida was going to go to Biden. And then all the in-person votes came in, and it flipped to Trump. In Georgia, it was the opposite. Because they got the in-person votes first, it went Trump first, and then as the absentee coming in, it flipped back to Biden. There was nothing unusual about that. It was just a matter of what order they were counting the votes. So here they're putting in rational means by which to count the votes to make it so that we get a smoother reporting of the votes. They don't allow you to give out food or drink 150 foot from, from a polling place or 25 feet from voters standing in line to vote. The Democrats are freaking out over this because they say it, it, this will discourage people standing in line to vote because they'll be dehydrated or whatever. And again, Jim Crow? They're, these people are nuts. Completely nuts. And this is... This is the president of the United States me making this argument. Now, it's true that early on in the drafting process of this, there were some pretty wacky ideas presented by some Georgia senators. They were trying to appease their base, and they threw out their all kinds of stuff to really suppress the, 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 the vote. But none of, those, none of those passed. None of those are passed part of the bill. Oh, yeah, so the, the, uh, the, um, the URL is jimcrow2.com. She secured that two weeks before. <laughs> and what's interesting about defense of this uh, bill is that if you remember, I don't know if you, you guys remember this guy, Sterling, who was this um, election official, a Republican, whose life was being threatened, being harassed by the Trump people, uh, and, and, and really went out, if you remember, went out, uh, I think, in the Senate steps of the, of the Georgia Senate and condemned the, the Trump, uh, Trump people for what they were doing and said the election was fair and there were there no issues and what was going on was, was, was horrific and, and completely unjustified. And um, he's come out. Remember, this is a guy who was very anti-Trump in that context. He's come out and said, 
uh, he, he, this is what he says. Look, quote, I'm quoting, look, Democrats have found a wonderful fundraising and turnout model based on one particular thing, voter suppression, voter suppression, racist voter suppression. And it works. It works in Georgia in 2020, and it's part of the rationale also behind H.R. 1. That's the bill going through Congress right now. He says, this is not a bill I think is the best bill in the whole world, which bill is. Um, he says, um, you know, a lot of this is about pure politics and payback and all kinds of stuff. But he says, <laughs> it's not a Jim Quote 2.0. Some of the provisions of the bill, by the way, uh, target, this is Republicans getting back at, uh, uh, you remember the, um, the um, Secretary of State, Brad Raffesperger, who, who uh, stood up to Trump. Well, he's dead. I mean, he's finished in Republican politics, and the bill demotes him, demotes the Secretary of State position significantly. So that's just Republicans getting back at each other, and that's why he's saying it's not ideal. Anyway, the thing is, it's not just the President of the United States and Democratic officials. Corporate America has flipped out. Coca-Cola, which is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, says that it does not support this legislation as it makes it harder for people to vote, not easier. Not clear that that's true at all. Um, the chief executive of Delta Airlines wrote that he, quote, needs to make it crystal clear that the final bill is unacceptable and does not match Delta's values. Uh, Biden has encouraged the uh, Major League Baseball not to hold its annual All-Star Game in Atlanta this, this uh, uh, summer. Quote, this is Jim Crow on steroids, what they're doing in Georgia. Sterling writes, I think it is morally reprehensible. I mean, he's quoted as saying this. I think it's morally reprehensible and disgusting that he's perpetuating economic blackmail over a lie. So there you have it. I, you know, I'm not an election expert. I don't know if this is the best election bill possible. But from everything I have read about it, from a number of sources, uh, uh, a source in the Washington Post, uh, sources at the Dispatch from which I was reading. I, I, I think the Dispatch is pretty good on these kind of things. This bill is not a bad bill, and it's not a bill that justifies this, uh, this insanity. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourrunbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support.
like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.